Welcome back to BRProud.com. He's Mikey Matuk, the former national champion, former LSU Tiger, always bringing the knowledge right here in your Go Nation, and a lot to talk about. As you Lots can, to talk about. You, you, you can only imagine the LSU Tiger brethren out there in some of the comment sections talking about the first series loss against Auburn. Now, mm -hmm. we said Alabama was going to be tricky. Auburn has been even more on fire as of late, taking right. down South Carolina. Obviously, I thought they were, if not the best at the time, one of the best in the conference. So, Auburn is on a hot streak right now. You ran into them this weekend. First, though, I want to talk about psychologically, you're number one for 11 straight weeks mm -hmm. and the preseason. Now you're number two. Yep. Does it almost take a little bit of the edge off, maybe a little bit of the pressure off? Yeah, I think so. I mean, obviously, the way they've approached this season, I don't think the number one ranking really had a lot of added pressure to them. I think they knew going in what the expectations were. They knew what the end goal was. So I don't think having that number one by their name added any extra pressure. But I think what it does do is it allows everyone else from the outside to look back and say, okay, well, maybe we're not going to just, you know, pick apart LSU with a fine-tooth comb and say, well, they're not good at this, they're not good at that because they're number one team in the country. Now they kind of moved off the throne. And I think it's good for the team. I think it's nice to have that adversity. It's better to have it now than have it in the regional or the super regional where you can't come back from it. And I think it, you know, they've had some adversity. They haven't lost many games. They haven't lost any series all year. But they've had some adversity and they've gotten through it really well. This is the biggest they've had all year, right? They've lost two straight for the first time. They lost the SEC series for the first time. So now how are they going to rebound? They have a game tonight, and they have a, a home series against Mississippi State, who's reeling, and then they go on the road to Georgia, who's actually playing really good baseball as well. You mentioned Auburn went to South Carolina. They took two out of three on the road there, took two out of three from LSU at home. And so um, Auburn is a tricky team. They're fighting for their postseason lives, but I think this in the long run is going to help LSU out. Um, and I want to bring this up. I talked about this last night. There's a lot of similarities, and I don't want to say up top to bottom between the last national championship team, which was 2009, and this team. But in 2009, in our fourth to last series of the year, we lost. We, that year we had not lost two straight games. We hadn't lost two games in a row or an SEC series up until that point. Fourth to last series of the year. This was the third to last series. So it was a week later, or a week before this one. We lost to Tennessee at home. We beat them 18-3 to on Friday. And then we lost by one by two runs on Saturday and lost nine to four on Sunday. Lost two in a row, lost series to a team that was, I think, 12th or 13th in conference at that time. Maybe 12th, because I didn't have 14 teams. So they were not very good. Maneri made all those moves, put, put um, Austin at shortstop, moved DJ off. We went 27-4, went to the World Series, won the national championship. Sometimes you need these situations for somebody else to get an opportunity and take the team to the next level. And I think you're going to see that with the rotation and the way that the bullpens use this, this this weekend. The one I always come back to is uh, Vanderbilt when they won the national title. And uh, I think it was, I think it was 2017, 2018 area. LSU run ruled them in the SEC tournament. Yep. And then one month to the day later, they won the College World Series. Yep. So it's not so much the psychology of a Tommy White who brings it every night, the Dylan Cruz, the Trey Morgan, the Paul right. Skeets, who are on the edge almost right. every single game. It's maybe some of those other guys that you see coming in, they go, okay, yeah. we, we, we finally got that out of the way. Now I can just go and I can be almost on, on the offensive a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely. And like you have, when you have adversity like this, you have something like this, you, other people get the opportunity to show them what they can do. And I think that, is only, is gonna, only going to help anyone. That's why baseball is such a beautiful game is because you can beat anyone on any given day. The worst place team in the division can beat the best place team in the division just based off of who's on the mound, who's not pitching well, and who's playing, playing well, right? And so Auburn showed you that. LSU showed you this weekend that when your bullpen doesn't throw strikes and your offense isn't driving guys in, probably not going to win those games. And I think that, you know, it's something that's been brewing over the last course, the course of the last three weeks. Offense has bailed. The pitching staff is out the last mm -hmm. few weeks. This past weekend, it wasn't the case. They left 14 runners stranded, I think, on Saturday or Sunday. And, you know, that's not going to happen. It's kind of an anomaly. They right. haven't done that all year. I'm not, I don't expect that to go forward. But when it all happens together, this is what happens. If you had to pick, and I'm going okay. to really kind of right. make you pick, if you had to pick a Sunday starter, because that just kind of feels like it, it, the question mark hasn't 
has it worked itself out? We mm -hmm. thought it was going to work itself out in April and now in May. Yeah. Still haven't arrived there, Mike. Yeah. We don't know. And I can tell you what I, I don't want to say I do know for a fact, but I can, I, I would imagine that Christian Little is not going to be that Sunday starter this year, this weekend, right? And look, Christian has, has had his moments. He's had some good outings. I think that he's going to have some important outings moving forward, whether that's coming out of the pen or not. But I think on Sunday, you know, that's what Jay's going to try to figure out. There's a, it's going to be a competition on who he trusts to throw strikes on Sunday. It's not about who's got the best stuff. It's not about who's going to be able to strike out 15 guys or who has the best potential. Who's going to be able to go on the mound, fill up the zone, and allow us to be competitive defensively because baseball is hard. Hitting is hard. If you're not throwing strikes and you're just giving them free bases, it makes it a whole lot easier. If you are throwing strikes and you're making them get hits, I mean, you get the ball 110 miles an hour on the nose right at somebody and be out. So give the opportunity to the defense to make plays and just keep it running. And I, and I think that, you know, I don't think it's going to happen this Sunday. I think that over the course of the next few weeks you may start seeing it, but I think Javen Coleman has a chance to move into that third starter role, right? Right now I think they're still trying to build him up. His velo dipped a little bit to 87-91. That's normal coming off injury. I mean, he had a quick recovery, right? And so he's going through that, those early the stages of the early season, not only say dead arm, but trying to battle through some stuff and try to get your arm in shape. And I think once he gets over that hump, which could be you know, a couple of outings more, I think if, if the Sunday guy's only going to give you four innings, he 100% can do that. And I think I wouldn't be shocked to see him slide into that role whenever he's ready. Let's talk about Thatcher Hurd because he's a guy that, he, when he's on, man, he is on. Yep. And maybe it's maybe it's psychologically, maybe it's coming off of injury with the back issue, maybe it's new setting, new coach, whatever it is. What are you seeing from him, and where do you kind of expect him to eventually find that role? So I think right now, I think he's kind of found a pretty good rhythm in that closer role, right? Coming out of the bullpen, um, you know, we talked a little bit about this off air. When you're starting and you know you're starting, you have all week to kind of prepare and almost psych yourself out sometimes, especially if you're kind of going through some things mentally of trying to figure some stuff out. And as a closer, as a reliever, you don't know when your number is going to be called. So when it's called, is hey, get up, get, get, get warm, get in the game, get out, right? And it's more of an, it's more of an instinctive type of thing as, as compared to like pre prepping and, and psyching yourself out. So I like him in that closer role. He's been very good the last few outings. And I think you keep him there. I don't want to disrupt his rhythm, allow him to continue to gain some confidence. And then if Jay thinks, you know, down the line in the postseason, he's kind of figured it out and he's got consistent enough, maybe you sneak him back in there. Or maybe somebody steps up and takes control of that third starter role and Ty Floyd is a little bit more consistent. And you say, okay, we don't need you in the starter role right now. We just need you to close the game out because we don't have – a power righty out the bullpen if he goes into the starting role. I mean, obviously, Christian Little maybe, but he had, Christian doesn't have the same stuff that Thatcher does. And then as far as that Sunday game, look, I, I hate to nitpick because the offense, like you said, they've bailed out the pitching yeah. so much this season. But if you had to nitpick as well, you look on Sunday, you go, how come the offense didn't respond? Were they pressing? Was Auburn throwing strikes and, and pressing the issue? What did you see? Because, I mean, you're a hitter. Yep. I mean, yep. that's, that's where your mind is at. Yep. What did you see on Sunday? So sometimes when you're playing, like baseball is a very, very much of a rhythm game, mm -hmm. right? It's timing, it's rhythm, it's kind of getting in the flow of the game, right? And when that flow is disrupted, sometimes it's hard to get going. And to me, the flow got disrupted from the first inning. I mean, you had, what, six, seven walks in that first inning. It took forever. You give up six runs. You get back out. Then you come back in. It's a quick inning offensively because you've been standing out there for so long. So now you go back out, to the, back out on defense. And it's just offense never was able to gain that rhythm. And that happens sometimes. It hasn't happened much this year at LSU. Um, but that happens whenever sometimes when the pitching staff isn't throwing a bunch of strikes and you're standing out there defensively for so long. Sometimes you just kind of lose that momentum and you kind of lose the, the ability to go out there and, and put some good at-bats together. I'm not making excuses because they have to figure that, that out. But this is a one-off game, at least in my opinion, right? They haven't shown that they do this very often. They've maybe done it two or three times all year, and that may be a lot. It may be not even that many times, right? So I'm not worried about that. Look, Dylan Cruz was a – I'm going to give out a stat, and this is – if you understand baseball, like this is a very unbelievable stat. Before the midweek game that he had played this past week, when there's a runner on third base with less than two outs, right, which means that when you have a runner on third base with less than two outs, 
dr ground ball, fly ball, sack fly, anything you can do to get him in, that's the most important thing. He was 100% on the year <laughs> in opportunities when he had a guy on third base with less than two outs of driving him in. He did that 100%. It, first time he didn't do it was um, this Tuesday or this past midweek game. And then bases loaded, I think his average was almost similar to that. <laughs> And then he, he had bases loaded a few times, he didn't get hit. It just happens. That's just part of it. Law of averages said at some point you're not going get, to get a hit every time. And that's just what happened this weekend. It just all seemed to happen at the same time. And so I don't think that's going to continue. Um, but you would like for, if the pitchers are struggling, for the offense to, to bang it out. But that's a lot of pressure to add on the offense to, to pick them up game in and game out. Can't believe you just said it and gave away the secret. I'm Dylan sorry. Cruz is human, human. everyone. I can't. Human. You heard it here first. Barely. Go check him out. Mike'd up with Mikey Ma took. It's great. I love it. I listen to it all the time. Appreciate it. You guys do great work. Go check him out. I always click the YouTube. That's the easiest for me, but you can find him just about everywhere on social media. So Mikey Ma took always, of course, joining us right here on BRProud.com.